actually all just one half, and I and I got these yesterday, so I'm kind of excited about them. Uh, I was looking for the lens to grow in to, to photograph this. Um, uh, this house in Palo Cal, it was in a king's house, rather small, about 1,200 feet, and um, this was an extensive remodel with uh, two wings put on the back. Two wings on the back to turn the house toward toward the north. The existing house kind of ignored those things. Um, uh, and the, this addition tool made a kind of correct these things. The angles you see, uh, they're not random, they're all deliberately based on the angles of the sun. And make sure that the summer sun is shaded and the winter comes under that under the roof and goes through those windows, warms the building. And then, as a standard thing, uh, on all the projects, we use um, zero VOC paint, zero VOC analysis, and coffee, chemical, no chemical. Because I realized that a long time ago, it was great for me to argue with clients. Hey, is it okay if I please don't put cancer for the chemicals in your house? Is that all right? I just think I'm stupid. <laughs> Question. And it's absurd that we're asking permission for that. So uh, I just come to a force for everybody. And when it comes up, they say, well, you want me to smear cancer for the chemicals for your walls? Okay, if you good one. 25 minutes square foot, go for it. And uh, the, the you realize how ridiculous that this is. This picture you're seeing show a little bit of the old house, the uh, living room with the old wood ceiling, and then the addition is kind of clearly there. And the design of it came about from the from the clients, from the family. They live, they, they wanted a house that opened to their gorgeous backyard, and they wanted a lot of light. The old house is dark and dank, and the new house is bright and airy. Beautiful, fresh air, and uh, is by the heat of the sun. That left side you see is master bed, very bright and again. And again, all those windows are designed to be uh, block the summer sun and block the winter sun. This could, uh, you know, this is another thing I could potentially touch on the whole idea of why we're building and sustainable through seems to be the, uh, the biggest group so far in the green uh, entry, and that is just, it's so appealing. Uh, visually, it's just a mentally appealing. Um, you can do these things for fun. You know, it's like you can go around in your garden and just to get your hands dirty. It's go to the farmer's market. Uh, that uh, that aspect of our lives in green community or food and why we're being uh, sustainable food is where it is. And pictures like this clearly show um, why uh, green building is where it is as well. Um, so let's uh, get back to um, the first slide here. So. Let's talk a little bit, guys, if you want to give a little more perspective about um, the green industry as a whole. Where do you, and this is where we're at right now, uh, they're projecting a lot of things. Where do you guys see things? Do you, do you see the growth uh, in your day-to-day lives, your jobs, um, your contractors, your subcontractors? Do you, do you sense this? Do you sense the excitement around green building? Uh, are people jumping on board? Are other um, professionals as excited about it as you guys are? Uh, I don't know about Scott, but I uh, in my my daily life is usually leveraging to a, a big room of people that are skeptical and cynical and um, and uh, kind of resentful that we're being forced to even look look at these things. You know, I, I usually play the room that I think I say phrase climate change and people storm so angry. Um, my perspective might be a little different, but. Uh, I, I'm, at, I'm at the mindset now we can't wait for the free market to catch up and we can't wait for people's opinions and, and um, prejudices and, and attitudes to change. We've been doing it for 30 years and it, it's too slow and it's never going to change everybody. I'm really at the mindset now that in order to get to where we need to get, we need to also be changing the regulations and we need to essentially force it, force it on people. It's only because of our own survival. You mix climate change, the um, insecurities around energy, the dependence on fossil fuel based to carbon energy. Mix all that together, and we've reached a kind of a, a, a fever pitch of needing to change these things. So, uh, let's change the laws. Let's force everybody to be a green building. And if you look, it's really what we're doing in California with the new California Green Build Code that comes into effect in Sure. So let's. Sorry, go, or go ahead. I was just 
say, well, let's get every building green building and be done with it. Now, and people can come in all they want, but meantime, we save entire, you know, megabytes of, of electricity every hour and, and keeping our water clean and keeping our air clean and not cleaning all the material. Sure. And, uh, you know, there's various initiatives going on in a lot of different places. And sometimes, you know, people get a little discouraged by lack of progress at the federal level, but um, from city to city and state to state, uh, building and interests are taking place, being put in place, uh, that are that are mandating things at more of a local, local level. So, uh, you see progress in a lot of different places. Um, Garrett, I'd like to yeah, yes. I'd like to comment about what you tied in that arena. Yep. Um, our arena at this point is that with a huge discussion at the state legislation and they sent up to committee whether Utah could adopt the 2009 energy codes and were still operating to the 2006 energy codes and actually be ended that's the way it came down. They adopted the commercial energy codes for commercial, but not for residential. They quoted the fact that the construction industry was down and they would add an unknown amount of costs to implement just code. Now, we're talking about anything beyond code, so uh, just make the lowest possible changes. And, and they decided not to implement it. So it shows you right there that there is definite resistance to change and resistance being forked into it. And a lot of the builders actually were the ones that were lobbying to put in the requirement. So back to Eric's point, we are now in the process of building again of the deep pitch that we once were but certainly putting houses out there that will haunt us, is the word I think, haunt us with their energy requirements for the next eight to 100 years, and along with houses are in operation, and people will come over two generations, I think, move into those houses to look back and go, what were they thinking? Um, this, is, this is a great um, segue and from a regional perspective is fascinating. Perhaps one of the three states that still had a yeah, 50% approval rating for President Bush when he went out in 2008. Uh, a very politically conservative place in the worst uh, trends, such as mandating green building standards, don't necessarily apply in places where people don't quite either take a long term view or quite get the picture yet, don't necessarily believe in the climate change science. Um, whereas here in California, 